scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says when the Lord shall come, the first thing we will hear is the blast of a trumpet. Because every time a king comes, he comes with triumph. He said the shout of a king shall not depart it's a shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous when he was born he was born in silence but when it was time for him to have a triumphant entry they shouted hosanna and they said blessed is he that comes in the name of the lord someone as you shout this final shout is a prophetic shout into your new season are you ready now seven Help them, help them, so they don't destroy it. May God bless you. Please be seated and give me the next five to ten minutes. Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place This is a theme of this conference and we'll be dealing along the lines of this prophetic word. Somebody will start running from his seat now. Just hold the person. The power of God is coming from someone. Physically, you stand up and start running. Please hold the person. Hold them right now. God is ending delay. He's taking away the spirit of delay. This is a ministry of signs and wonders. Just be sensitive. Whether you are an usher or not, just be your neighbor's keeper. I'm saying it again. People will stand up like physically and start running. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. Help her. Help her. Speed is coming to your destiny. Speed, speed is coming. And Elijah ran on barefoot 
and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. Psalm 133 Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's no one like you Into the darkness you shine Into the darkness you shine expectation you have in this church but I sense that much prayer has gone for this meeting and, and there is serious, there is a drawing and a pulling of the anointing I want to teach but you people will not let me teach. Who is Ifai? Ifai your season of reward is coming this is what I'm hearing. I don't know who you are he, does, he works here in the ministry oh you are one of the pastors and I pray for you. Something is going to come upon your life that will turn you around. Because I heard the name Ifai. You are Ifai too. I will pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that we are not weary in well doing. It says for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Grace upon him, O God. We stretch our hands as the house of God and we declare you step into a new dimension. That which you have seen in the life of our Father, I decree and declare, let it be reproduced in your life. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for all of you too, in Jesus' name, may God help you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You work with UBA. I just saw UBA. That's United Bank UBA. Who is that person? If this is all I do tonight and I wrap up, will you be offended? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! lest they dip their hands in iniquity. In the name of Jesus, Job said, in six things the Lord will deliver you. One of it is the scorching tongues of men. I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every trouble around your unit where you are working that would demand deducting money from you to pay for, in the name of Jesus, we stand prophetically. The house of God is a solution center and we decree in the name of Jesus, it shall not stand because the Lord has not decreed it it shall not stand in the name of Jesus rather when men say there is a casting down for you and all those who are connected to this altar let it be for you that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ that grace for exemption let it come upon you he says, and when I see the blood, I will pass. We place upon you that mark of the blood. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sylvester. Sylvester. Who is Sylvester? Sylvester. It's like you have come out here again. I'm seeing a face that. Sil who is Sylvester? Who is that? Ah, this man again? I thought you answered another name. Please verify so that. Uh, is he Sylvester? Huh? Okay, I, I'm sorry. Don't be embarrassed, sir. I just want to, you know, sometimes because of the abuse of the prophetic and the abuse of so many things, sometimes we are careful just because there is a mismanagement of spiritual things. No, it, it does not mean there are people who fear God. Are we together now? And this is one of the things that you need to understand. Unfortunately and sadly, we know that the body of Christ may have all kinds of things but that does not mean everybody graced by God is acting or playing games. There are people who fear God. Hallelujah. The Lord has spoken once, you have heard twice. That power belongs to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, truly, God is doing something in your ministry. There are things we may not be able to say in the open, but in the name of Jesus, the wisdom that prepares you for the next level of your kingdom assignment. I stretch my hands in Jesus' name. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone for two years, you have been looking for someone who is missing. I don't know who that, like two years I'm seeing. It's like, I don't know if it's a brother a relative or somebody you know has been missing. Who is that person? Hmm. And Samuel told Saul, he says the donkey you are looking for that he has been found. Under a certain conditions, missing things can return home. Not every condition, but a certain spiritual condition. Madam, who have you been looking for? Who is James? Brother. Who is James? My brother, my That's blood the person brother. Who has been missing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jesus. Hmm. Father, here at Word of Life. We stand upon this altar in the name of Jesus Christ that everybody who is not where they should be by the power of the prophetic we relocate them back to the place of destiny is someone agreeing with this prayer we relocate them back to the place of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ we relocate them back to the place of destiny and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus wherever they are by the power that raised Christ from the dead we release them to return home we release them to touch base with their various families let it be so in Jesus name I pray please sit down God bless you let's read Psalm 133 if that is all we do and we wrap up then we thank God for it. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 133. Yes, please. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Please stop. It says, behold. The word behold means see and conceive as a reality in your spirit. What is about to be said. When it says behold, it means use more than your eyes. To relate with what is about to be said. Behold means to see. Behold means to conceive as a reality in your spirit. It says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hold on. So people can dwell together but not in unity. Unity is more than dwelling together. The Bible says... When brethren dwell together, 
in unity. Next verse. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. So he's using an expression to relate the power of dwelling together in unity. Are you ready now? Verse 2. It is like, go ahead, sir. It is like precious ointment upon the head. Upon that, the head. Uh -huh. That ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard. Even Aaron's beard. That means he's teaching you something now. Remember that Aaron was a priest. So he's now introducing priesthood into the equation. That whatever it is, the administration of any blessing that will follow cannot be outside of priesthood. Even Aaron's beard. Uh-huh. That went down to the skirts of his garment. Down to the skirts of his garment. Verse 3. Verse 3. As the dew of Hermon. As the dew of Hermon. And as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Even life forevermore. Keep verse 3. It says. When brethren dwell together in unity. Are we still here? There are two expressions he uses. To help us understand what happens in the realm of the spirit. When brethren dwell together in unity. Number one, he uses priesthood. He said it is like the oil that comes upon the head of a priest. It will start from his head to his beard. But eventually get to every part connected to him. Then he says, in case you do not understand that. Let me use everyday geography expression. It is also like the dew upon Hammon that descends. He says, for there, the Lord commanded the blessing. There does not mean the location. There means that spiritual state. That if you can pay the price to attain unto that spiritual state, that God has commanded the blessing. And he tells you that that blessing is life. Paragosiata. Even life forevermore. That's what is commanded. When you read other versions, they will tell you the blessing, which is life forevermore. Are we learning now? So, the Bible is very clear that when it has to do, in fact, every speaking of God Every speaking of God is law. Why? The Bible declares that where the word of a king is, there is power. So everything God says, indeed, is a commanded blessing. According to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4, the Bible gives us the character of spiritual power. That you are not powerful unless and until you satisfy that litmus test as we see from verse 2 to 4. It says, and God said, verse 3. The Hebrew expression is, and Elohim said, light be. And he said, there was. So if you must be powerful in the spirit, you must have the ability to, number one, say. Number two, it must be, as you have said. But that does not stop there. That verse 4 says, and he saw that what he said was good four tests you must say it help those under the anointing please you must say it and then it happens as you have said it and you must see that what you have said is good please help them they need any They need any medical attention or anything. I hope they don't. Are we together? You must say it and it must come to pass. So the Bible says, when brethren dwell together in unity, please look up. It says, there in that state of unity is life and even life evermore. What is life? Life does not just mean the ability to breathe in and out. Look at me. Life means every factor that allows for sustainability, allows for continuity, and allows for the longevity of anything is called life. Are we together now? That means whatever needs to be in place to allow for the sustainability 
the longevity of anything is called life. So if your business is dying, whatever needs to be there for it to be sustained, for it to, be, be, to, be, to remain, is called life. The factor that makes for sufficiency, the factor that makes for sustainability, the factor that makes for longevity of anything is called life. And the Bible says that when believers can attain a state of unity, it is one of the platforms that can activate the commanded blessing. Hallelujah. There are two examples of this graphically as we see in scripture. Number one is Genesis 11. Genesis chapter 11 from verse 1. This one and the whole earth was one of, and the whole earth was, was of, of one language take note now one communication and of one speech and of one speech and it came to pass uh -huh. as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina and, dwelt and there. they dwell there next verse and they said one to another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone, as slime had they for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face now of the earth. Now hold up. Earth. We are about to go to verse 5. I want to show you the power of unity. Watch this. This is a very interesting place in scripture. Because in this place, the Holy Spirit is not mentioned. Satan is not mentioned. All that is mentioned is the unity of a people. But they are about to do something that only God could stop. Next verse. Verse 5. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, and the tower which the children of men built. Watch this. They had not started building. They only agreed that it will be built. And God already saw a building rising in the realm of the spirit. They did not, they had not started building physically. They only came into agreement that this is what we will do. But what God was seeing in the realm of the spirit was a tower rising. The Bible says God came down. Verse 6. And the Lord said, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. So this is the factor responsible for the exploit. The people is one. Uh -huh. And they, and they have, have all one, one language. And this now they begin to do. Are you seeing now? They want to start it physically. But their unity has finished it in the spirit. These people were not born again. They had not met Jesus. There is no expression of them believing scripture. There is no expression of the Holy Spirit assisting them. They only came with the power of unity and said this is what we will do. And it took only God to destroy them. So imagine how many other things would have happened in your life. There are people who come to church and sit together but number one they do not agree with the vision they do not connect with the grace and they wonder why simple things do not happen the bible says there is a spiritual state unity is more than togetherness it is agreeing in mind that when your prophet stands over you and says in jesus name be blessed you don't sit arguing and say all oh, this no 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 one person spoke, Nimrod Kush, let us build. They said, we agree. That means if word of life agrees that there are certain dimensions of exploits that must happen this year, that if you agree, the only force, at the time they made this statement, the, 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 the Bible does not record the Holy Spirit coming to assist them. The blessedness of redemption was not even there to support them. How much more you? Now the power of the word, the power of the prophetic, the power of the Holy Spirit. For there, 
the Lord had commanded the blessing, even sufficiency, even continuity, all that it makes for you to stand and to last can happen in a place where you connect. There's unity there. Do you know what that means? You can come to a church like this and you can be here for many years. You are together but not yet in unity. And somebody can come for the first time and say, I believe. I, I may not know much spiritually, but Lord, I know this is a man you have sent. This Aaron, as the oil comes, do you know when you stand in front of a shower to take your bath, it does not matter the part that is closest to the shower. The remaining part of the body is happy because it will eventually reach every part. Literally. If the hand disconnects from that structure, it may not have an opportunity to have that experience. Unity. Genesis 11. Let's hear God's verdict. Verse 6. Hear what God himself and the Lord said, and the Lord said, behold, behold, the people is one. The people is one. And they have all one language. They have one language. And this they begin to do. Uh -huh. And now nothing will restrain from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be restrained from them. Who are the them? The them who are united. God himself is speaking that the states these people have assumed in the spirit there is no power in existence that can stop them from doing what they have imagined to do. That means when a husband and wife agree in unity that this year we will build, even if all they have in their account is 5,000, he's saying that state of unity attracts something from the realm of the spirit. Hold on. I wish I had time. Please don't miss tomorrow. I wish I had time, I would have taught you how the strong man is bound. <laughs> Listen carefully. Jesus, daddy, Jesus is casting out a devil. And they said he is using Beelzebub. Is that true? The prince of the demons. And Jesus now makes a statement. And he says, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by who does your fathers and all your leaders cast? Then he says, any kingdom listen carefully now he he's speaking within the context of unity any kingdom divided against itself thank you for being good bible students so he's talking of unity then he says if you enter a man's house you cannot do anything to that man except you bind him so question from what you have learned how do you bind a strong man disunite what makes him powerful are you learning now watch this for as long as jesus came upon the earth and father son and, and holy spirit were in agreement there was absolutely nothing that could be done against jesus the only condition for jesus to die was that the holy ghost had to leave him that that there had to be a disruption in that tripartite structure that was why the same spirit came back to raise him from the dead listen carefully are we together so the only way you bind a man is to create something that disrupts that structure of unity in the spirit when the devil wants to attack a family what he does is he begins to use offense, begins to use whatever. The goal is that he wants to penetrate that family. But he knows that once there is unity, there is a blessing there. And the blessing is life. The life there is everything that must be at work for that family to work. So what Satan does is he starts to use all the elements of the flesh to bind their hands. When the devil wants to destroy a church, he first observes the unity structure of that church. Hear me carefully. And he now begins to orchestrate events that now bind the hands of the people. For there the Lord had commanded the blessing. 
when satan wants to bind a business what does he now do he what satan is interested in is the unity structure so well, listen to me for as long as jesus acknowledged the authority of the father and the ministry of the holy spirit and said i and my father are one satan could come to him and could not do anything but finally satan now found an occasion where the spirit of god left him he had to leave him that was why jesus cried when jesus says do not take this cup off me the cup was not death he had been saying he would die the cup was that for the first time the trinity would be disunited when he hung on the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. That means, my father, you've turned your face away from me. Because at that point, he had become sin. When Satan wanted to destroy the apostolic structure, the first thing he did was to start destroying the unity structure. So he came through, he came directly to Jesus and then he now manipulated Peter's compassion. Satan can use good things to kill. It doesn't always have to be evil. Are we together? So Peter now was trying to address, oh Jesus, don't talk about redemption. Then he now came through Judas. The most important thing is that he succeeded in destabilizing that unity structure. I will give you the last scripture and then we'll pray. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. <laughs> now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, if you're a believer and you can see anything projected there, please read the remaining part. One to read. They were all one accord. Hold on. This is the definition of unity right there. One accord. Not in one place. The most important thing is the accord, not the place. They can be in the same place and not be in one accord. Men, hear me. Every noble man in world of life has an assignment this night. Go back home and restore the unity structure of your family. Because Satan, if you do not restore the unity structure, between husband to his wife husband to the children stand as a formidable force and the only power in existence that can stop you is god to the point that the bible says if you do something against your wife and disrupts that unity structure even your prayer Let me wrap up. I hope you are hearing what I'm telling you. Restoring the unity structure sometimes would demand saying, I am sorry. If that is how far you need to go, do it. It would demand saying, I, I didn't know better than I know now. Now I know better. Whatever it will take to restore the unity structure, there are many prayers you will not pray. Unity will pray the prayer for you. Are we together? That means the primary assignment of every leader in word of life is not just to display skill, worship team, protocol, always be sensitive to the unity structure the moment you see something happening forget about what the physical case is it's an attack from the realm of the spirit hallelujah and can i tell you you were fortunate and blessed to have your father and prophet one time the head of the entire christian you now understand the prophetic implication all in one man to bind the body of christ in unity now you know better you know what god was doing 
There has to be some noble fathers today that will go home and call their wives and say, you know what? We are not two political parties. The devil is a liar. We are tired of failing in spite of our personal prayers. You can't lock yourself in the room praying and fasting and shouting there. No, let's come together in one accord. Hold on. Please listen, listen. Give me acts. Let's continue. The next thing that will happen is my prophecy for you. The moment there was one accord, the next thing that happened suddenly. Ah, suddenly always follows unity. Suddenly a job comes. Suddenly the pregnancy comes. Suddenly a new mantle comes upon the man of God. Not just because you prayed and fasted alone. You attained a state where God had commanded the blessing. Even life. Life means whatever it will take for you to succeed. He said the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I am come that ye may have life. And he says to have it more abundantly. Let's finish the scripture. Suddenly. And suddenly there came, there came a sound from heaven. A sound as from of heaven, a rushing mighty wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where and they it, were sitting. And it filled all the house. And there appeared unto them uh -huh. clothed tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. Stop. The key word in this scripture is not the cloven tongues. It's each of them. Who did not benefit from the unity? Nobody. It sat upon each of them. That means in a state of unity, when the blessing comes, there is nobody who will say, I was just a spectator. It's such on each. So when the financial miracle comes, it sits on each of them. When the breakthrough comes, it sits. Man of God, for you and your leaders, when the anointing comes, it sits. The Bible says, it sat on each of them. It sat on each of them. There were times in the Bible where people were together but were not united. For instance, in the pool called Bethesda, the Bible says there laid many important folks, not only one person. They were together but everybody was for himself. And there was a man as a result who remained there for 38 years because there was no unity. Only one person could be blessed. There were 10 lepers who sat together. Everybody for himself. But when they were in one accord, the men in this assembly, I stand on the grace of our Father to charge you. There is more that you can do. Can I tell you? Individually, you may show expertise, but together you will produce results. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine uh -huh. and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every one soul. Uh -huh. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. Hold on. This was a secret that they remained steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the early church, in fellowship, in prayer, and in breaking of bread. Are we together now? And the Bible says many wonders. Life, there the Lord had commanded the blessing. And what is that blessing? Sufficiency. Whatever must be available for you to succeed. And it says, and all that believed were together. That was a secret. And had all things in common. Next verse. And sold their possessions uh -huh. and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. As every man has need. Let's read the last verse. It says, and they, praising God and having favor. No, 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 with, no, no, no. Go back to 46, please. And they continuing daily. 
with one accord in the temple, in the temple and breaking, breaking bread, from bread from house to house, house did eat their meat with, with gladness and singleness of hearts. Finally, praising and, God and having favor with all the people. What was the result? And the Lord added to stop, the church. Stop. Stop. It does not matter where the addition came. The key word is, and the Lord added. To your business, and the Lord added. To your children, and the Lord. To the mantle on your life, and the Lord. We are going to pray. No man can come into a strong man's house. What made the man strong? Not muscles, unity. Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. So what makes the man strong is unity. A stronger than he means a more united than he. When he comes, he can set division. And that weakness goes. Let me tell you one of the reasons why God is powerful is because of the honor to the Trinity structure of the triune nature. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The one word one does not mean singular. It means unity. Even Jesus was praying in John chapter 17. When you read from verse 1, the Bible says, He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. When you read verse 3 now or so, he says, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. And then he now began to speak about unity. He says, That they may be one. Even as we are one. That means they, that they discover the hidden power that is resident in being one. Unity does not mean uniformity. Unity means for one purpose. The son was secured enough to acknowledge the authority of the father. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he never called himself father. Not once. He called the spirit of God father, Abba. He called father God father. And he was satisfied being the son. Yet the Bible says they were one. So unity does not mean the same position. Unity does not mean sharing the same rank. It means coordinating your strength no matter how small or great to insist that you achieve the same thing. Are we together? Please stand everybody. We're about to pray. If you can hold hands together, hold hands together, please. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments. Of your peace, the walls of pride and prejudice shall see. When we are your instruments of peace, two prayer points. Prayer point number one is for everyone, but particularly for our men. Father, everything that has made the men weak through this unity, let there be a restoration of that state. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There is a reason why I said hold hands. Word of life, every business, every family, someone is praying. Let every ministry 
connected to this grace family connected to this altar business Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. So now you understand Psalm 133. It says, In that state of unity, the Lord had commanded the blessing, even life. Now you are ready to declare life. You know what life is? For some of you, the life you need is finances. For some of you, the life you need is strengthening of your body. When I saw our father, I stood and true confession. I was already praying for myself and said, Lord, the grace you have placed upon this man, that at this age and at this point, I'm sure that if we run many young people, he will run greater than you. Don't you ever think this one is more than vitamins and minerals. There is a mysterious ah, come on, please. Word of life. Are we together? Hear me. For some of you, the life you need is the wisdom to produce results. For some of you, the life you need is strategic relationships. I don't know what represents life. But now you will release your hands and you will clap your hand from the depth of your heart and cry lord release life to my finances to my destiny go ahead and pray 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 Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For someone here, you are saying, Apostle, you may not know the kind of darkness that has surrounded my life. I have good news for you. The Bible says, God who commanded light out of darkness, not into darkness. God can use darkness as a raw material and bring light out of it. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze